Thank you for joining us today for the program Bible Truth. Our study uh, will begin at uh, uh, Luke uh, 1 verse 34 and we'll go through Luke 1 verse 45. Today's lesson is number 4 in our Luke series. The date is uh, uh, January the 24th, 2024, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. 2 Peter 3, 18. All right, in Luke, uh, we've uh, obviously already been through the first 33 verses of the first chapter, and <clears throat> just uh, uh, kind of a uh, it's kind of a warm up uh, uh, and a review. Uh, I have just a few questions, and uh, I'll pause so you can answer that question, and then I will uh, give the answer uh, after a after a slight pause. Uh, and, uh, you can, so you can check yourself. Uh, that way. Now, uh, to whom was Luke writing this? He called it an orderly account. Theophilus. He was writing to Theophilus. We saw that in the prologue in verses 1 through 4. Now, what do we know about Luke? Uh, well, <laughs> unless you answer. Uh, well, we knew we know very little, really. We know that he was a historian because of the way he wrote. We know he was a doctor because uh, Paul refers to him as a doctor, and uh, by that and uh, and other scriptural indications, we know he was a close associate of the Apostle Paul on his uh, missionary journeys. Now, uh, who were Zacharias and Elizabeth? Well, they were the parents of John the Baptist. Who told Zacharias that his wife Elizabeth would have a baby? The angel Gabriel. Now, how did Zacharias respond to Gabriel? Uh, he said, how can this be? He said, I'm so old. Uh, and so what happened to Zacharias? Well, he went mute. Uh, Gabriel said, uh, well, because, uh, because of your response, uh, you're not going to be able to speak until these things come about. And uh, we see, we'll, we'll study that actually, we'll see that later on, uh, where that actually came true, just like every prophecy in the Bible comes true. Now, what else did Gabriel, uh, or who else did Gabriel call up? He called on Mary, uh, and why did he? Why? Did, what did he tell her? He told her that he that she would uh, uh, have a baby, uh, and that would be the Messiah for her people Israel. Gabriel said that Jesus would be the son of the what? This is when he's talking to Mary, son of the highest, uh, and that Jesus, Jesus, would, <laughs> Jesus would rule from the throne of his father. And his father uh, mentioned there David, the throne of his father David. So Gabriel said Jesus would be the son of the highest and would rule from the throne of his father David. Okay, hope you did well on that uh, on that little quiz. But uh, even if you didn't, uh, just uh, hang on and stay with us, and you will learn a lot from God's word. Now, I want to start today. Uh, I'm going to read verses, uh, and this is all in Luke one. I'm going to read 34 through 38. Luke one 34 through 38. Then Mary said to the angel, "How can this be?" since I do not know a man. Uh, and the uh, angel 
answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, uh, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Short conversation, but uh, what an announcement. Right? This is oftentimes called the Annunciation, which is just a fancy word for the announcement of Jesus' birth. Alright, uh, as you know, we'd like to go to some, some uh, cross-reference uh, verses from time to time. So, go to uh, go back to Matthew. Matthew, alright, Luke, and then go back to Mark, and then go back to Matthew. The first book of the New Testament. <clears throat> We're going to read one verse. Read Matthew 1, 18. Uh, now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his, after his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Child of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I right, turn back to Luke through that. Uh, now, why didn't Gabriel rebuke uh, and punish her as he did Zacharias? What's that's a good question. All right? Now, Luke's intent is to show that Jesus would be descended physically from Mary, who was in the lineage of King David. He also would have to be born of a virgin to fulfill the scriptures. Uh, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 7.14 says he would be born of a virgin. Now, his legal father, uh, Joseph, uh, as what his father, as was supposed, uh, as the, the wording that Luke uses. So his legal father, Joseph, as pointed out by Matthew, gave him the right to David's throne. Now, uh, look at a uh, uh, look at a passage in Romans. Right? Luke, John, Acts, and then Romans. So we'll look at Romans 1. And <clears throat> I'm going to read... Uh, uh, Romans 1, verses 1 through 4. Alright, so this is written, of course, by the, by Paul the Apostle. And he starts with uh, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he, God, promised uh, before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. And the Holy Scriptures then were the Old Testament. Uh, Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit, with a capital S, meaning Holy Spirit, according to the Holy Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Because he, because he was resur resurrected from the dead, that showed uh, that he had the power to be the Son of God. Now, uh, in verse 35, uh, uh, and all of that was basically out of verse 34 that we read earlier. Now, now out of verse 35, uh, go back to Matthew one more time. Uh, And this time, we're going to read uh, Matthew 1, verse 20. Matthew 1, 20 says, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appear, appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me go ahead and read 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. That's the reason he came. Now, this 
Overcoming was a supernatural act of God. And I'm looking at Luke 1.35. A supernatural act of God. It was not a Greek or Roman mythological union between a God, small God, a small G, and a human. Right. Uh, the Son of God. Right. The Son of God. Just look at, look at a couple of uh, uh, verses. Go back to Mark. Right. The book immediately before Luke. Right, go to Mark 1. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are the, considered the synoptic Gospels because they are uh, very, very similar. Alright, now look at Mark 1, verse 11. Then a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That was following his baptism, following Jesus' baptism, he was baptized by John the Baptizer, or John the Baptist, we call him today. Um, now look at another verse, uh, another passage. Go to John. That's the book right after Luke. All right, we're going to go to John, the first chapter. And I will read 29 through 34. John 1, 29 through 34. The next day John, and this is John the Baptist, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What tremendous news. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man, uh, and that man is capitalized, capital M, who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, we just read about it, and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. John said, there's no doubt in my mind, he's the Son of God. Alright, back to Luke, uh, Luke 1, 36. Alright, uh, the scripture says, Elizabeth, uh, uh, your cousin. Uh, or the King James says, Elizabeth, your cousin. And, that very, and it very well could be that, it, that uh, Elizabeth and Mary were cousins. Uh, but the Greek, actually, the Greek word actually is better translated relative. Like Greek, uh, Elizabeth, your relative. But could be, a, could, could be a cousin, of course. Now we know from Scripture, verses we've already read, that Zechariah and Elizabeth were of the priestly tribe of Levi. Tribe, priestly tribe of Levi. Now we know Joseph was of the kingly tribe of Judah. Judah. Uh, <clears throat> we know the Virgin Mary. We know that the Virgin Mary had to be of the kingly tribe, uh, which is indicated in uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, a couple of times, uh, let's, well, and, well, let's look at both of them because they're both in Isaiah. If you go back to uh, the book of Isaiah, uh, first go to Isaiah 7. All right, Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself, and by the way, Isaiah wrote uh, more than 700 years before Jesus was born. But he says here in 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. That's exactly what Matthew says. Alright, also while we're in Isaiah, go to Isaiah 9. And then uh, look at 6 and 7. 
Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even forever. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, it also says here in Luke that uh, she, uh, and be referring to Elizabeth, says she conceived in her old age. Now, we're not told exactly what age, but she was probably in her 60s or 70s, possibly even her 80s. Now, Sarah, if you remember, Sarah was 90 when she, uh, when she uh, birthed Isaac. Uh, that's in the book of Genesis. We're not going to go there right now. Now there are two other precedents in the Bible. We're not going to look at. Uh, we're not going to look at the scriptures right now. But uh, uh, Samson and Samuel had uh, uh, unusual, unique births. But all four of these, as Isaac, Samson, Samuel, and John the Baptist, led up to the completely supernatural birth of Jesus Christ. That we're studying right here in Luke. All right, now in Luke 1 37, uh, it says that nothing is impossible with God. Uh, we could look at several uh, of passages and verses that support that uh, statement, but let's just go to one. Go back in Genesis. Uh, Genesis, go to Genesis 18. All right, Genesis uh, 18, and I'm going to read verses 13 and 14. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Abraham was actually speaking to the Lord uh, right there in that particular passage. So nothing is impossible with God. All right, verse 38 in Luke 1. Maid servant, uh, if you're looking in the uh, King James Version, it says uh, handmaid. Same thing. Now, Mary is willing to do this or anything else the Lord directs her to do. Her marriage may be called off, she may be humiliated, she may be stoned, but whatever, she says, let it be to me according to thy word. She subjected herself to God's word, and so should we. Mary is well versed in the Old Testament scriptures, uh, the Old Testament word of God, and we'll see that we'll see that later. Uh, we see a little bit here, but we'll see it more plainly uh, 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 soon. Now she also uh, has just conversed with a messenger of God, uh, which angel means a messenger. She's also just conversed with the messenger of God, who brought her a direct word. Now it's generally thought that Mary conceived by the Holy Spirit at this time. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I believe Scripture points to that. Uh, and this is an example. And within it, within the example, is a command to know and follow the Word. Uh, now go, go to John again. Luke and John is the next book. Uh, and we're going to look uh, at John 1. And uh, listen to John 1, uh, 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. How, how, how clear can words be? Uh, 
Alright, go back to Isaiah. I know we were there before, but let's go there again. Very, a very, very important verse. One of my, one of my favorites. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40. And we'll read Isaiah 40, verse 8. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Forever. It never goes out of style. Okay, very good. Now let's go to uh, the next verses, uh, starting with verse 39, and uh, we'll go through 45 today. All right, 39 through 45. Let me read those verses first. Luke 1, 39. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah. Now we've mentioned Judah before, the tribe of Judah. And entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. There was no doubt in her mind that God was going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. Don't know why we... doubt it today <clears throat> well that's another story all right verse 39 all right, in those days and, and just I'm kind of going through these verses and explaining uh, a little bit as we go now in those days what 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 did he mean by I uh, was uh, dr. Luke mean by those days what days what days well in verse 5 back in uh, Luke 1 5 the days of Herod the Great. So it was those days. It was those days. Alright, and uh, it mentions hill country. Now if I had a map here, I would uh, show you uh, Jerusalem, which is where the temple uh, the temple was, where Zacharias was and had the meeting with uh, Gabriel. Uh, so, uh, and, and we would see the uh, tremendous elevation of Jerusalem to all the country around and all the hills that were around Jerusalem. Uh, and that was in the land of Judah. And so, again, if we had a map, you could see that, but we don't, so just uh, uh, just understand that there were a lot of hills around there. So it was all hill country, so it's not very specific. All right, it says with haste. Uh, haste, all of you know what haste means, to go fast. All right, now the city of Judah. This is very interesting. The city of Judah. All right, and that's the city of Judah because it's in the territory of the tribe of Judah. If you remember, uh, and this goes back to the Old Testament, to Exodus, that when the Israelites came out of Egypt and they went into the Promised Land, which is the land that we we're speaking about right here, and when they went in, the land was divided among the tribes, one of them being Judah. So when it says a city of Judah, it's within that, uh, within that part. I mean, it was updated, of course, at this point. But it was still in Judah, as far as the Jews are concerned. All right, now Hebron. All right, very interesting, very interesting uh, Hebron. Uh, as mentioned, and it could have been Hebron. The scripture doesn't say, and there are a lot of villages around there. Uh, and, and all the hill country, but it could have been Hebron. I would like for us to look at one reference, though, uh, in the Old Testament. We'll go back to Joshua. Uh, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then Joshua. Uh, go to Joshua 21 uh, and listen to two verses. Uh, listen to 9. This is Joshua 21, verse 9 first. So they gave 
from the tribe of the children of Judah and from the tribe of the children of Simeon, these cities which are designated by name. Uh, and let me go ahead and read 10, connect these together, which were for the children of Aaron. Uh, Aaron was the original high priest, uh, one of the families of the Kohathites, who were of the children of Levi. Levi, the tribe of Levi. The Levi was the, the Levitical or priestly tribe, for the lot was theirs first. Now, verse 11, and they gave them Kerjath Arba. Arba was the father of Anak. Uh, we'll talk about that another time which is Hebron in the mountains of Judah with the common mountains of Judah. So uh, the Levitical tribe was uh, given this city of Hebron located in, in Judah. So and that could have been the city that Zacharias and Elizabeth lived in. So we don't know that for sure. Now verse 40 of uh, Luke 1. Why didn't Zacharias greet Mary? Uh, says that uh, uh, Elizabeth greeted her, or Mary greeted Elizabeth. Uh, why didn't Zacharias? Well, could be that he couldn't hear or come in. Uh, it says in Scripture that, uh, you know, Gabriel said, will you not be able to speak? But it could be that he wasn't able to, to hear either. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. Now, verse 41, very, very uh, and crucial, very crucial verse. The babe leaped in her womb. So who was she carrying? She was carrying John the Baptist. What was John the Baptist's role? To be the forerunner of Jesus. So Elizabeth was carrying John the Baptist in her womb, and John the Baptist leaped in her womb, according to verse 41. Now John... Uh, uh, couldn't shout a praise for Jesus, so he jumped. Now here is the number one reason to believe, to know that life is present in the womb. The politicians talk about when does life start, when does life start, and all this, well, loose. Life starts as soon as conception. All right, continuing in verse 41. Now, was Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit before or was uh, she filled simultaneously uh, with this event? Well, in verse 15, just flip back to verse 15 right quick. It says, For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. So that indicates to me from the time of conception, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, who can receive the Holy Spirit? Who can receive the Holy Spirit? Is John the Baptist the only one? Certainly not. All right, go to the book of Acts. All right, Luke, John, Acts. Right, Acts 2. Right, the second of Acts speaks of the day of Pentecost. And we'll speak about that in more detail later on. But for now, let's just read one verse. Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. Then Peter, who is presenting a sermon, then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In verse 42 of Luke 1, back to Luke 1 now. Uh, Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you among women. Now, Note that this is said in praise of the fruit of her womb, not in praise of Mary herself. Verse 43, When filled with the Holy Spirit, one has low thoughts of his own merits and high thoughts of God's favors. We realize that we are nothing without the Holy Spirit, without Jesus. 
We have no righteousness of our own. The only righteousness we can hope to have is that of God, and we will have it if we uh, repent of our sins and believe in Him as Savior. Verse 44, for joy, for joy. Uh, go to John uh, one more time. John 1 again. I'm going to read John 1, 29. The next day, John, this is John the Baptist, the next day John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away, who takes away the sin of the world. A great news. That's the gospel. That's the great news. He announced the Savior. He announced the Savior. Without the Savior, all of us would die in our sins. Alright, verse 45. Believed. Luke 1, 45. Believed. Uh, in John, this time, go to John 20. John 20. And then we'll read John 20, 29. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have seen, uh, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. All right, and the last scripture for the day, Romans 10, the Roman John, actually Romans, excuse me, the Romans 10. And look at verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God is risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay, that's uh, that's our lesson for today. We got through uh, verse 45, uh, and of course we'll start at uh, verse 46 next time. And remember, if you have Bible questions, uh, just email them to uh, Bible Truth 1025 at gmail.com, uh, and uh, I will respond. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, today. Uh, it's our prayer that this time together was meaningful to you and you learned more about God's work. God alone can save and He saves through His Son, Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's recorded in Acts 4.12. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this time together. Uh, please uh, bless it and please bless all those who, who are listening. Uh, and <clears throat> Lord, uh, we pray for the salvation of any who are listening who are, uh, who are not saved as yet, Lord, uh, because you will not always strive with man. There will be uh, a last opportunity. Could it be today? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> but Lord, uh, Again, we just thank you for the many blessings which you have bestowed us, bestowed upon us, and uh, please be with us in these coming days and weeks that we might be uh, witnesses for you. Uh, and I ask all this in your name. Amen.